Welcome back to Snow Order, guys, and in this video, you can clearly see that it's a little bit of a foggy morning here on the Highway Holland map, and we are back in the Silverado 3500, and we're going to be doing a little bit more of a heavy towing test than we've ever done before with this truck. Now, we've loaded this thing up pretty heavily beforehand, but we've never loaded it up quite as heavy as we're going to load it today. Now, as you may have seen just a second ago, we've put a much larger uh, trailer hookup in the back of it. This is a high saddle. Yes, the same one that goes on the gigantic standard trucks in the game. So really what we have to do here is we have to head up to the piping factory up here. Let me see if I can get the pipe factory on the map if I can find it. There it is. There's the pipe factory, and there is the piping trailer that we're going to need to pick up and take down to the port gate. Now, the port gate has been closed up until this point, but what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be attempting to bring that trailer all the way to the port gate, and we're also going to put this, uh, this Duramax through one heck of a towing test at the same time. So let's go ahead and fire it up and see what we can do. It sounds so good. It really does sound so good. Now, I have the maximum performance engine tune in this thing, and I also have the basically the, the most high-end transmission that I can run. And as you can see, that saddle high basically takes up almost the entire bed. Well, I should say it takes up nearly half of the bed. Not quite the entire bed, but nearly half the bed. And you guys have been really enjoying highway hauling, and I really, not only am I glad that you guys have been enjoying highway hauling, but I'm also really glad that you guys have been enjoying the missions that we've been doing out here, because this map is not only a very involved map, but it's a map that you begin to develop a connection with over time. You begin to develop a connection with the area, the environment, you begin to develop a connection with the road system, and once you start to feel at home here, the map opens itself up into a, into basically a whole new idea and a whole new mindset than you may have had on it before. Now, fortunately, this pipe factory is really close to the garage. Hey, oh, holy cow, that was a, that was a much better drift than I thought we were going to pull off with that thing. Didn't really carry on the momentum the way I wanted to, but you know what? It's fine. Don't worry about it. So we're going to go ahead and actually make a left right here. Sup, boys? How you doing? Here to pick up that pipe trailer. Let's see how big this thing Oh! Ah, not a problem at all for the good old Duramax. Right? Tow capacity? What is that? Don't worry about it. It's fine. Got the hot tune on this thing. We'll be good to go. Now, let's back this thing up and, first of all, see if it'll hook up correctly. And... Moment of truth. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. That rear suspension is not happy. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Change suspension mode. That... So, that is what that adjustable rear suspension is for. These are the kind of trailers that it was meant for. Now, I will tell you right now that I really should have opted for the weighted front bumper. I guarantee you that's going to come back to bite me. But, you know, I kind of overlooked that small detail. And like I said before, at, whoa, as you can see, it's actually like, the funny thing is, the, like, the lip of like the front of that trailer is so big that it kind of actually keeps the truck down. It's kind of funny how, it, how it'll help keep the truck down. Now, let me check the map real quick. We'll check the GPS and see if it would be more efficient to go left or right out of here. It might actually be better to go left because if we go left, actually, we will go left because left will take us through a route that we've never uh, taken with this truck before. But not only that, left will take us actually, I think, on a better route. So, oh my God, look at the level of weight that this truck is just having to bear right now. It's having to carry so much. And hold on, watch this. I'm gonna bring that suspension down and then I'm gonna turn the HUD off so you guys can actually see like full on what this truck is taking right now. Look at that. That's way more than this poor thing should ever have to endure. Oh my God, this poor truck. Wow. Although, you want to talk about a durability test. This is a freaking durability test and a half. Jeez. What a durability test that is. I mean, it, do it doesn't get much more durability testing 
than that. I mean, wow, look at that. Freaking look at that. That's absolutely wild. That's absolutely insane. Okay, I'm turning the HUD back on, and we're going to go ahead and continue with our journey. And before we go any further uh, on a completely bottomed-out suspension, we're going to go ahead and pop it right back up and carry on. Now, I'm actually pretty dang impressed already with how this thing is performing with that gigantic trailer behind it. I kind of figured it was either going to just, you know, bury the rear suspension of the truck or the truck was just not going to drive right. And it does kind of drive a little weird, but it's actually really impressive how much programming went into that rear suspension and how much programming went into balancing the weight of the truck because, whoa, okay, that was a little weird. The front's doing some weird stuff. Like I said, I really should have put that extra weight on the front. I know that for next time. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be the name of the game next time we do a heavy haul of any sort with this 3500. But this thing has been one of y'all's favorite trucks lately. And I, I really understand why. Because not only is it really, really, really fun to drive, but I can understand why you guys, like, why you guys enjoy this truck. Because it's, it's also, it's also got that really definitive feature of this generation of Chevy trucks, which is the front end. And I'm going to go ahead and admit, like, right off the bat that I'm definitely more partial to the GMC offering of this truck, the GMC version of this truck, simply because of the front end. I much prefer the way uh, the new GMC front end looks over the way uh, the new Chevy front end looks. I know they're the same truck, but different front ends, different trim options, and stuff like that can go a long way sometimes, especially if you don't really care for the way a truck looks in the front end. But yeah, that should give you a good look right there. Actually, that should give you a really good look right there. That's the, yeah, that's the ticket right there. That's what this thing is having to deal with. Wow. That is what this thing is having to deal with. What an incredible monster. I'll tell you, though, actually. Oh, it's not going anywhere. Okay, there we go. I was like, she's not going anywhere, bud. Now, if you wanted to go, like, full role play, full sim, you could play with the HUD completely turned off. The only problem with that is that you lose your advanced functions, and I would love to play with the HUD off sometimes, but once again, you can't really deal with losing your advanced options because losing your advanced options puts you at such an incredible disadvantage that I can understand why a lot of people would not want to deal with having to lose their advanced options. I mean, the advanced options go so far in this game as far as, you know, what it, what they allow you to do and the features of the vehicle they allow you to use. I mean, if you didn't have the advanced functions, you wouldn't be able to raise and lower the rear end of this vehicle. You wouldn't be able to use the air suspension. So that right there is a huge reason to keep the HUD on and not play with it off. Now, I understand if you're playing with the HUD off and maybe you're using an H pattern shifter. And that is one way where I could see uh, keeping the HUD off all the time but at the same time not a lot of people play with that setup and some do and i know that like you know there is a community around that especially for snowrunner although uh it, it does it does need to be said sometimes that the wheel support and peripheral support for snowrunner isn't always as polished as i think a lot of people would like it to be but some people still do it so let's keep on making our way down the road real quick and i gotta say i mean i know we haven't run into any like major uphill sections yet but this thing is pulling great. I mean, it gets itself up into sixth gear in automatic mode, which is literally by far the best thing I could ask for. Now, I know there's a task revolving around these two trucks that are completely broken and smashed up on the side of the road, but fortunately, one of the times where I was driving through here with Diesel Addict, he just kind of like pushed him out of the way. He was like, don't worry about it. Because I literally was like, hey, um, there's some trucks blocking the way. And he was like, don't worry about it. I got you and proceeded to quite literally bulldoze them. All right, let's see if it'll take high gear. That's impressive. That's real impressive. Get right up the hill in high gear with all that weight behind it. Wow, what an impressive truck. That's some Duramax power for you, I'll tell you that. But no, like for real, this thing absolutely rips. No complaints about this truck at all. And I'm really excited for you guys to get your hands on this truck once it like hopefully in the future lands on consoles. Now. If it has already landed on consoles by the time I film this video, then obviously I will put something in the comment section down below. But if it has not landed on console as of the time of, uh, of publishing this video, then I'll, uh, of course, personally, I really hope that it comes to consoles ASAP because it is such an incredible rig. Such an incredible rig. 
it just drives so well. It's like, you can tell it was purpose-built to do hauling because it doesn't really do anything else. It doesn't really do crawling. It doesn't really do mudding, or at least not on the level of, like, some mud trucks or mega trucks, obviously. But you get it in a heavy hauling environment, and this thing just goes. And what I love about it on a map like this, my trailer is starting to pass me. Let's not have that happen. What I love about it on a map like this, though, is the fact that as it's going along, like, you can tell that this thing is right at home out here on a map where power and hauling capability, you know, and, and just, like, weight capacity overall is a really, really big factor, and it really does rise to the occasion. If I was going to pick one pickup truck to use on highway hauling, it would definitely be this thing right here, because, once again, you can use, and now, granted, there is another truck that you can use in a similar way to this, and that is the L400, and the L400 is a tremendous truck. It's an absolutely awesome truck, and I believe, as, as far as when I last checked, it had the options of saddle high and saddle low, so you could technically do this mission with the L400 as well if you wanted to stay in the world of pickup trucks and not go to a full-on heavy-duty truck, but it appears as though we are creeping up on the gates here, and uh, let's see, if we drop these off, or this off, the gates should open right up. Crossing my fingers and hoping for the best. Let's go. Dude, we got 18 grand and 3,000 XP for that. That is freaking awesome. And now the gates are up and we have full access to use the port really however we see fit. And we can basically get in and out of here with no issues and also use the loading zone down here at the port as well. Now, that's going to do it for this video, guys. And actually, look, we've got a short gooseneck chilling out out here. That's really cool. But if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below um, on whether or not you enjoy this type of hauling gameplay. And also, I know that this was a little bit more outside the realm of realism than what I normally do on this map because uh, normally you would not see a uh, Chevy Silverado 3500 hauling a trailer like that in real life. But you know what? Sometimes it's fun to go outside of the sort of bounds of realism at times and really just kind of enjoy the sheer capability of mods like this in SnowRunner. So if you guys would like to see more videos like this or streams, make sure you're subscribed and have those notifications turned on. And I will see you guys next time. Talk to you all later, and I hope you guys enjoy.